One thing with me, my all is I got to talk it truth. Everybody pan that they see in there for God jail. Police will lock up all of them for be stupid. Me I be honest with you no people. You understand? Holy pa, holy pa sit no no do wrong. When all is I use on the phone, we're not supposed to I use on the phone. Fix business and then use the phone. That is what you're supposed to do. The brother that got in a yellow shirt, don't go on the chance to fix business, you know. But no, 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 no. When you decide to have on the phone, I make one holy pan nice and go on like an idiot. Put away the phone, man. Welcome back to My View TV, the people's platform, the home of undiluted news, reviews, updates, and your daily dose of entertainment. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Leave us a comment, like, share, and subscribe. I don't bring nobody forward in your future for me. Everything where you see up my natural talent. Let me tell you something. You see, when you know what to please the audience with, it's simple me. Well, go on, my people. Hope everybody doing okay. Hope everybody doing all right. Life may never seems to be the way we want it to be, but we live the best way we can. There is no perfect life. Let me say that again. There is no perfect life, but we can make moments perfect. Have yourself a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Saturday, or should I say, enjoy what's left of the day. Anyway, now, people, I can just jump right into the news. Five people are in custody following the siege of a firearm and several rounds of ammo during a vehicle checkpoint operation in Dunrobin Avenue, Kingston, on Thursday. Report reaching our news seems that about 8.15 p.m., the St. Andrew Central Police was on an operation in the area when a motor car was stopped for breaching the road traffic act. A search of the vehicle was conducted and one 357 Magnum containing six cartridges, one 9mm Berta pistol with eight 9mm cartridges and one Glock 17 pistol with ten 9mm cartridges was found. The five occupants of the vehicle, including a female, was taken into custody. All right, to the short light of the car. All of them. All of them should have got ice. So what I said, did I mean what I said? I you know me already. I no, I take you back anyway, no people. Watch my guy move on. Drama don't got a court yesterday. Kill Marlon, dead him, did I get bail? Lice firm old accused of pulling his gun and threatening the mother of his child during a dispute was yesterday denied bail in the St. Catherine Parish Court. Businessman Marlon Smith was remanded by Parish Judge Natalie Query Dixon. In an objection to bail, the clerk of court expressed concern that Smith may interfere with the case and that is exactly where I'm not going to do. Me I tell you the truth, you understand? Watch me I move on because them a boy yeah, get freed. Yes, people, them get freed. Me know, no, I wonder who. Oh, I be telling about it, no, man. After 11 years, three men were acquitted of a 2011 murder on Friday at the Supreme Court. Alfonso Sargent, Shante Finikin, and John Finikin were on trial in the Supreme Court for the 2011 murder of bus conductor Dalton Dennis in Golden Springs, St. Andrew. A statement given by the deceased several days after he was shot and in the hospital was a prosecution main source of evidence during the trial that commenced on February 7th. I'm going to tell you something. If you want to get off of any case, you have to get yourself a good lawyer. Don't follow Gina and go down at the bottom of the barrel. Mr. So rich for your story. The man was represented by Peter Champagne, KC, and Samoya Campbell. The statement named four men inclusive of the accused men as the attacker. Dennis died several days after the statement was recorded. For the majority of the trial, Champagne and Campbell questioned the authenticity of the statement as well as the integrity of the police officers that recorded it. They also challenged the identification of their client. The presiding judge, Justice Dale Pusey, admitted a level of uncertainty and established that he could not feel sure based on a number of issues with the statement. Long time I tell you that the police them are idiot, you know. Long, 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 long time. But anyway, no people. Like over there at the court, it's only fit. They give an update on Gina, the national hero of the thief. Yes, people. With a little patty shop liar, right at the bottom of the barrel. She going to pick up that liar, the Gina. Come like you don't want to come out. You don't want to get bail. If you don't want to get bail, you have to spend some of the money with your thief and get yourself a KC. You understand? Get yourself a King's Council. That little liar that can't help you. You understand? Me, I tell you the truth. I am extremely disappointed in the decision 
but we'll have to accept the decision of the court. The fact that my client handed in her passport in my mind demonstrates that there's a high probability that she would answer to the bail and that she would attend her trial. Bail is not a matter of punishment. That is not what should be considered at this time. And yes, the seriousness of the offense ought to be taken into consideration, but it is not the only factor. And as a matter of fact, it should never be the primary factor. The conditions of our jails and prison is well known. It is documented. It is not ideal. And for someone who has suffered from an infection after a surgery, there's a likelihood that there will be a reinfection. And I'm not sure what the consequences are and what it can be. But it's not a risk that the state should take. People, I don't want to get the message twisted, you know, you understand? I'm not for Gina and come out of jail, but I'm just going to show Gina and say, the amount of money where you take, you could get a good lawyer, because this one I can't help you, you know? This one I can't help you, you are turning right fish by you, know? I tell you, around there, you're going to tell you, I tell them, so what I said, I mean, that's it. you know, I'm already going to take you back. So you can go and come and talk and talk and talk and find excuses like this one, you know? It is unknown fact that the correctional facilities and the jail police cells facilities are terrible. They are below the standard, as I indicated, for even healthy persons. Moreover, for persons who are being acting or suffering from medical conditions, especially a debilitating conditions. And so I believe this is a matter that justice requires serious consideration, and not only in this particular case, but Overall, it's a breach of constitutional rights, we all know, to be detained in human conditions. And we are there understand it, that inmates are actually facilitating the delivery of medical services to each other. I, I, I think this goes beyond the bounds. So, since you know so much, it is a known fact too. So, Gina, and taking people their money and the people that want their money, all the people that get it back. That is what we want. You come, come tell me. Anyway, people, we can move on. Four St. Catherine residents was remanded in custody after appearing in St. Catherine Parish Court on Friday in connection with the theft of a woman motor car. All four of them had shot a bus. 19-year-old Tatiana Champagne along with 29-year-old Sean Harrison, Odin Bright and Cheyenne Anderson had been charged with motor vehicle last year and receiving stolen property. According to the court records, at about 7.10 p.m. on February 13, the complainant securely locked her car, a Toyota Axe motor car, in the KFC parking lot across from the St. James Parish Court. She returned to find it missing. Yes, people. Mr. When she come out of KFC, people, she only see the spot. She had one there for the rapture guard with her car left her. You understand? Because she had one sinner. Uh, but that is not my concern. News will come for go now. She reported the matter to the police and the tracker and the car led them to the section of Coral Gardens where they found the partially scrapped vehicle in bushes. A Toyota Belter sped away from the scene and was intercepted in the vicinity of Iberia Star Hotel. With the four suspects aboard. A bag containing the complainant's personal information was also discovered in the Toyota Belter. After the allegations were outlined, the clerk informed the court that the case file was incomplete due to the absence of statement from the police officer. Presiding Parish Judge Keisha Grant used Friday's court appearance to advise the four defendants to seek legal representation. You are going to remain in custody until next court date. I was told you are not from St. James, you are from St. Catherine. That doesn't make you eligible for bail. They eligible for get slapped with. That is where me think we could have sent them back at them parish in one box. You understand? One box them could have go back up at them parish in a. So what I said that I mean what I said. Oh, you know me already. Ah, oh, no, take it back. And I just know me know say the police them I eat that you know a long time. Watch your one pan wa go on now. I can give you the chicken feed story. Swift action by the police has resulted in the recovery of more than half the 600 bag of chicken feed stolen in Olaba St. Catherine on Thursday. A man has so far been arrested in connection with the seizure. Our news team understand that a flatbed international truck was transported 600 bags of chicken feed and fertilizer to Spalding Clarendon when the occupants traveling in a gray motor car on a section of the Olaba main road signaled the driver that he had an oil leak. And the driver fooled to, you know, the driver pulled over and made checks but saw no oil leak from the truck. When he attempted to reboard the vehicle, 
two men accosted him, tied him up and placed him inside the truck and subsequently drove the vehicle away. The robbers reportedly drove the truck to a location on East Road Kingston 12 where other men were waiting. The men, the police said, unload some of the goods from the truck. They were, however, accosted by a team from a popular security company, Arkai to be exact, which responded to the robbery and went into the area. Yes, people, upon seeing the security guard, the men made their escape in several motor vehicles. One suspect, however, was held by the security personnel and later handed over to the police. A motor guard driven by the suspect was also seized. The police arrived on the scene and later found the stolen truck on a football field in the same community with 442 bags of feeding and fertilizer. Yes, people. You understand them find some of us on paper yard. Them say them still look for the rest of them. You understand? But why me say? One is a police, all is a police doing stupidness. Most of the kind of my police, you know, are worse police, you know, and that's why they're so stupid. Yeah, they're the truth, because they're my boy, your skin should have burned them. Uh, light, you know, should have light up vehicle. So, what I said, and I mean, what I said, I you know me already. Oh, uh, no, I'll take you back. After a night of terror that saw residents clearing as gunshots rang out, seven houses and two vehicles damaged by fire, the police were on the ground in the community of Tucker St. James on Thursday to try to bring calm to the area. From as early as 9 p.m., Wednesday, lawmen told our news team residents were forced to take cover as armed thugs fired indiscriminately on sections of the community. Firefighters who responded to the call that a house and a car were on fire were forced to flee because of heavy gunfire. They later returned after a strong contingent of police arrived and order was restored. However, by then, four houses had been totally ravaged in the blaze, while three others had been partially damaged. A tower of Oxy was totally cut in the inferno, while a Nissan AD wagon motor car was damaged partially. There were no reported deaths or injuries. On Thursday morning, residents declined to comment on the flare of violence. There was a very visible police presence and lawmen have vowed to maintain order. Up to first time, no arrests have been made. According to a senior police officer, the attack is believed to be in retaliation for Tuesday's murder of two men in the nearby community of Granville. 24-year-old Rexford Jarrett and 29-year-old Orange Reed were fatally shot about 2.30 p.m. in a section of that community called Gothic Bottom. While rumors have run rampant that new life has been bred into an old feud between Granville and Tucker, the police have a different theory. The incident is believed to be in retaliation to some murders that took place on Tuesday. The men were trailed from Tucker to Granville and shot there, but it's not like Granville and Tucker men are at war. It seemed to be a Tucker and Tucker, the officer told our news team on Thursday. He asked not to be identified by name as he was not authorized to speak with the media on this issue. Because the police have had a presence in Tucker, the men trailed them to Granville and shot them in Granville, he added. Councillor Michael Troop of the People's National Party Granville Division is adamant that though it has had its fair share of violence over the years, his division is not the problem at this time. I am vexed because Granville has been cool. From last year, no murder has been committed in Granville. We have little problems in Pitfour Heights and we, got, we quiet it down. Now we have this that we hear it's outsiders, trail men and kill them, he told the news team. His immediate focus, he says, will be to help quell the violence before it escalates. He plans to speak with Granville residents, especially the young men, to stress the importance of remaining focused on living in a safe and crime-free environment. Up to Monday, the day before the shooting that is said to have sparked the largest warura, the St. James Police Division had numbers to be proud of. There has been an almost 50% drop in murders compared to, compared to the corresponding period last year. There were 40 in 2022 and 21 this year, a 47.5% fall. 13 persons have been injured during 14 shootings in St. James up to February 20th this year, compared to 14 persons injured during 13 shootings in 2022.